Could you imagine that this was shot with a regular camera? Well, nowadays you can use DaVinci Resolve Studio to make your 120 frames per second video into something like this, 1000 frames per second, and even slower. Imagine all the creative possibilities and impressed clients. But does it always work? It doesn't. So let's figure out how we can use this effect the best way possible by experimenting in different locations, different settings, and get to know the effect even more. Almost 2000 frames here now. Oh, Very optimistic test. Yeah, yeah this is. Uh, <laughs> I'd be surprised if this works. Oh, this is interesting. One of the reasons why we wanted to make this video is to learn how to use this tool the best way possible. Because you don't want to end up in this situation. Yo, what's up? Cool. Hey. Nice. You want to make your video go viral, right? Thousand frames, slow motion. Even two thousand. Two, four thousand frames per second, slow motion. Rain, dancer, waterfall. Cool. Haha, <laughs> they think I have a slow motion camera, but I just use DaVinci Resolve and speed it down. I just used optical flow and AI better. What? What was going on? Uh, what? Why is it working? Is it optical flow? Uh, what, what's going on? What? Why isn't it working? Why? Come on! No, come on. No. I promised 4,000 frames. Come on. Da Vinci, help me. Oh. No, Da Vinci, come on. No. Okay, we're trying to do some 240 FPS uh, with HD and some 4K 120 frames. This is fake. It says we are rigged up. Already it looks cool with the 120 frames, so I'm excited to see this. If it can slow it down four times or something like that. Traditional slow motion is made by capturing more frames than normal within a second, and then stretching those frames out to playback over a longer period of time. With artificial slow motion, the process is similar, but in this case, the software needs to generate the missing frames in between the real frames to achieve a normal playback speed. Old school slow motion typically used frame blending to slow down footage. As you can see here, instead of creating the missing frame, it blends the existing frames together. But with optical flow and other frame interpolation techniques, this is not something that is commonly used anymore. So what we'll be testing today is the optical flow frame interpolation in DaVinci Resolve, and we'll be putting the better and faster settings up against each other, as well as testing other techniques and settings to push the effects to its limits. What, what kind of settings do you need to think about? Uh, okay, so to shoot, uh slow motion or fake slow motion, you need to match the shutter for what you're actually going to shoot. If your aim is to slow down 120 FPS four times to get 480 FPS slow motion, in this case, we would multiply 480 by two to get one over 960 second shutter. With shutter angle, we have to do it a bit differently. Here, you divide 180 degree shutter with the number of times you want to slow down your footage. So in this case, we have to slow it down four times, meaning that we have to take 180 degrees and divide it by four to get 45 degree shutter angle. You can always shoot at a lower shutter angle or a higher shutter speed, but these are the minimum requirements to avoid motion blur. Of course, the faster the shutter speed, the darker the image. Yeah, you need a lot yeah. of light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here we have like a really fast moving object mm -hmm. and details mm -hmm. in the shots. So uh, first is AI better. Let's see how that is going. It looks really good. It's just right before it hits. It looks like the battery is like wobbling a bit. Freeze frame here now. You can see it's not working. 
to summarize this shot, it's probably mm. text is really hard. But I think that the details, like the particles, are really good. Yeah. Obviously, slowing it down more than this would probably totally break it. And what we've discovered is that faster is a lot more pixelated, but it works better. So yeah. faster works better than better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, it's the, the frame interpolation at least looks better, but it's lower resolution. Okay. And I think that has to do with it's harder the more pixels it has to create, if that makes sense. So yeah. if something is moving, if you have a wide shot, even though you're running, you might not move that much, that many pixels in within the frame. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the faster does. It kind of does half the resolution on the image. That's why yep. it becomes a little bit more pixelated, but that makes it easier to, because it has to move less pixels. Okay. Mm. And thanks to Paddy Cartwright for your tests uh, that's inspired us to do this. And the main thing here now is that we want to like, really dig into when does it work, when does it not work. Mm -hmm. Am I can you please hand over the VMAT battery? It's the new X99 VMAN battery from Small Rig. This is actually shockproof. The Small Rig X99 VMAN battery is a very sturdy 99 watt hour battery. It's drop proof from 1.5 meters, it's dust proof, and IP54 waterproof. And you can power a lot of things with it. It has eight independent outputs, two USB-C ports with up to 100 watts power delivery, two DTAP ports, one on each side, one USB-A port, two DC out ports, one that is 12 volt and one 8 volt, and of course connecting the battery to a V-mount on the camera or other accessories. It feels very futuristic as it has an anti-glare touchscreen, which shows a lot of information like temperature, it estimates how long the battery will run, it has information about the different ports, and so on. You can also change the light on the screen and turn on a little flashlight. It even has an app to be able to control several batteries at the same time on set. Thanks to Small Rig for sponsoring this episode. Check out the battery, there's a link in the description. Pixel distance is one of the key contributors to how well optical flow will work. More pixel distance means that more pixels will have to be generated, complicating the process. Here we have two shots that have been slowed down 400% each using optical flow. And as we can see with these circles, the movement is much greater within the frame on the football shot, making it a lot harder to process. Timeline resolution can also affect how well optical flow works. In an HD timeline, there's four times less resolution to process, decreasing the pixels needed to generate and thereby often improving the result of the effect as we can see here. So now let's do some uh, football, soccer. I think this is a Typical thing we'd use slow motion. And I'm gonna try and do a overhead kick. Yeah, I'm getting old, so we need some. So, do you remember Patrick? Hello, hello. Done? Yeah, not very much. We got audience. He's the man.
And then we tried rain. Yeah. Very optimistic test. Yeah, yeah this is. Uh, I'd be surprised if this works. Does it look like rain? Yeah, you see, like the rain on the case. It's just like not natural. Um, no, no. And this makes sense because what the rain essentially becomes here is just noise because it it doesn't yeah. know to like follow one raindrop <laughs> all the way and do that for all the raindrops. So here we can see uh, again. So spinning now faces really good, and even the hair. Mm. And you can see in the background the the leaves or the plant behind there is not as good. Mm. I guess it's a combination of it lacking detail, mm. so it's just sort of like a blur of something moving. Yeah. And also it's moving more within the frame than his face, which is mostly standing sure. still. I think a lot of people maybe think, I want to shoot some commercials or videos with humans in slow motion, because that's always funny. So I tried to test more with humans and faces and like really speed it down a lot, just to see how far can we push it. So this is me running. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's 4,000 frames. I know the fingers will not work, but just the face. I mean, the face works really well. The The problem with the hands could also be because they're moving a lot more in the frame than your face is. So this is, uh, this is just straight from the camera. I'm spinning it down to 240 frames. So this is 50%. Slower. That looks very good. Yeah. It's cool to just see the details in the hair. And <laughs> 2,000 frames. This is not gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see it like warp, like warp to the right frame. <laughs> it was impressive until, of course, 2,000 frames is uh, gonna struggle. We wanted to see whether the codec inside the camera, how much that helps. So using AI better two times. First is the C300, and then is the FX3. It's really hard to say. Looks very clean. I don't know if it's because of the white background. The white background probably helps. So far, the codex doesn't matter that much. And then we speed it all down to almost 2,000 frames here now. <laughs> if, I, if I saw this, I would be like, yeah, okay. That's so good. So, yeah, you can see your fingers a little bit as it appears behind your body. Oh, yeah. But other than that, it's quite clean. So if you're shooting something with people and you want to make something funny or, I don't, I don't know, anything with faces, you can actually speed it quite a lot down. I know that a lot of people would like to use probably slow motion for uh, sports, and uh, I always dreamt of having a shot of myself doing an uh, overhead kick in slow motion, so this was the time. It works quite well. I'm under the impression after testing this that wide shots are 100% best because then you're limiting how much it's moving within the frame. Here we have uh, this interesting, because now I'm pushing it really far. I'm going to kick the ball as hard as I can. Yeah, it's relatively quite close and the yeah. ball is going to move really fast. Yeah. So first is uh, AI better. Oh, I, I was hoping that would work. You see something's going on. Mm. We don't notice like how bad it is until you actually pause it and yeah, watch the true. frame. And then faster, which looks better as expected uh, from the tests. One technique that worked quite well was Paddy Cartwright's tip to slow down the footage first to 50%, render in place, and slow down to 50% again. We found that faster first and then better worked best, but bear in mind you do lose some resolution that way. You can yeah. see the pixels. Here you see a proof. Yeah. Just remember that faster gives better interpolation, but it's a little bit 
destructive. An effect I use, which often works, is to just soften the image a little bit yeah. and then add grain. Because that grain artificially makes the image appear sharper again, but it's still a little bit soft, okay. so you're kind of blurring so out those uh, pixels. So e let's say you're going to do a close-up. You shoot as high resolution as possible, but a bit wider. Then speed it down and you zoom in. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Digitally, yeah. yeah. Next one, is it 200 frames from camera, ah. HD, yeah. or is it mm. AI? Yeah, that's AI. <laughs> <laughs> you also see here in the stream, yeah, it's a lot more like uh, it's like living. You feel it. You know, as a, as humans, we kind of we can feel when something feels artificial. And then I tried some flames. I, I did not know what to expect here. And this is how quick it actually was. And this is HD, 240 frames. This is 480, speed it down 50%. I don't see it in the flames that much, but you can tell the small rig logo is like flickering a bit. And then uh, 960. Here you're starting to see this is fake. I think 480 worked okay, but slower than that, no. Here I'm speeding from 120 frames 4K straight to 1200 frames hmm. with faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was about to say, maybe it gets better, but no. <laughs> Our friend Aaron sent us some footage shot with the free fly wave at 500 FPS. So what we did was to speed up one version to 120 FPS and slow it back down again using optical flow to compare it to the original footage to see how much it actually helps with increasing the FPS you shoot at. So let's recap. Shoot at the highest shutter speed or lowest shutter angle that you can. Understand the correlation between speed and field of view. Something moving at a set speed will move slower in a wide shot relative to the frame compared to a close-up. This helps because the amount of pixels the object moves in between frames largely determines how good the final outcome will be. To minimize pixel distance, you have three options. You can shoot at a higher frame rate, you can zoom out to a wider shot, or you can decrease the amount of pixels in the frame by lowering the output timeline resolution. Do you think uh, you would ever use speeding it down Da Vinci for any yeah. projects in the yeah, future? Yeah, 100%, but I would keep in mind, maybe do some tests before, just to make sure it works, whatever I'm trying to shoot. Although I wouldn't recommend promising a big client that this is going to work, this technique is quite safe to use when it comes to social media and other places where people can't pixel peep or go frame by frame. So, uh, based on these tests, if you have any ideas on more tests we can do with this, maybe using the studio as well, uh, comment below and we can make a te new test and upload it to our Instagram and the X YouTube. Uh, thanks again to Patty for the inspiration to do this, and uh, we'll probably come up with a new video soon. What is the next video actually? Axion? Testing out the new Axion M7. That's probably. true. And thanks again to Small Rig for sponsoring this episode. If you want to check out their battery, there's a link in the description. I think that's a battery we're going to use a lot since we can drop yeah. it down. And I know you sometimes <laughs> tend to fall when you film. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, check out the link in the description. And also, we made a series with Nikon about the new Nikon ZR camera. Check out that series as well on Nikon Europe. And uh, yeah, see you again. Hello. Hello.